Well, welcome back, and we start with the big news in the battle to solve the migrant crisis. Britain is about to sign a deal that will give us access to EU intelligence. And in fact, Rishi Sunak has been over in Spain, in Granada, trying to thrash this out with our European friends. What is fascinating is that actually, until a few weeks ago, the Spanish were adamant they didn't even want to discuss this at this particular meeting. But more than 25,000 migrants have crossed the channel this year. We've also been reporting widely about what's been going on in Lampedusa, what's been going on in Greece, and the mass transportation of human cargo and human traffic right across Europe. Nations becoming increasingly frustrated. Germany and France have now said that they are going to shut their borders to anyone who's passed through Italy, which is remarkable, considering that the vast majority of them, that's not quite true, a lot of them are coming through Italy. But a deal with the Frontex border agency could be confirmed next week. What will this mean? Well, it means that border force officials will be able to keep track of migrant movements and people smuggling across Europe. A couple of big points on this. Firstly, it could well suck the wind out of Keir Starmer's sails. The Labour Party conference starts over the weekend and then into early next week. And at that, what Labour really are expected to have said was, we have got some kind of closer cooperation with our European friends and allies. Of course, we never really wanted to leave the European Union at all. But given that the Tories forced that through, this is the best that we can do. We've gone to meet people at Frontex. We've gone to meet Emmanuel Macron. Look how wonderful Labour is. We can solve the migrant crisis with greater international cooperation. Well, what Rishi Sunak has done is just do that now, apparently. So taking the wind out of their sails. The second part of it is a lot of people are saying, well, we should never let the European Union. This is a, a big demonstration of that. We're now trying to go back into something that we were in the first place. Again, the flip side is, well, was it working at the time? Did it work at the time? And will this work? Richard Tice, the leader of reform and now of this parish, was very vocal earlier on, saying the only thing that will work is turning back the boats. And greater international cooperation is not actually the answer when it comes to a European setting because of a fundamental lack a political will. But joining me now is the former Chief Immigration Officer of the UK Border Force, it's Kevin Saunders. Kevin, thank you very, very much. Will working more closely with Frontex actually make a blind bit of difference? It will make a small bit difference, but it won't make a huge difference. Richard is right. The only way to stop, is to stop this problem is to stop the boats actually coming. We, before Brexit, we were an associate member of Frontex, so it meant we didn't have full membership, but we did bits and pieces with them. Um, sharing intelligence is always good, but sharing intelligence won't stop the boats. OK, all right. So you think that maybe a bit too much could be made of this, and when they're talking about a Europe-wide solution, possibly the only Europe-wide solution would be to stop them entering Europe. Yes, it, it would. Uh, the, the trouble is, we, we've heard people talk about a Europe-wide solution um, for years, mm. but Europe is totally divided on this. I mean, did you know that Hungary, for example, has only taken 47 migrants? Poland will take Ukrainians, but they won't take anybody else. Yeah. Um, they, they're, they're putting barriers up all over the place. I mean, the French have actually closed the crossing into Italy um, on their border. So it, it, it's ridiculous. The Europeans can't agree on anything. I suppose that's what they're trying to do now, bizarrely as well. The next meeting of this particular European group is taking place in England in spring, which should possibly be just before our general election. So that will be interesting politically. Uh, some people would say, look, when we were members of the European Union, we could have done more. We had you know, returns, agreements, and we would have been having more intelligence to tackle the human traffickers, and that now, just trying to get back involved with something is a visible sign of Brexiteer weakness. What do you think of that? No, Patrick, we've got to, we've got to get, get away from this nonsense that before Brexit, everything was wonderful. The returns agreement didn't work before Brexit. We took more people from Europe than they took from us. The only people that played the game with um, prior, prior to Brexit was Ireland. None of the other Europeans did. It was a total and absolute mess. Okay. So let's let's get away from this before Brexit. Everything yeah. was wonderful. It wasn't. 
So what's the thing when it comes to the human traffickers, by the way, Kevin, as well? It's talking about, oh, all right, okay, if we can share intelligence with Frontex on, on human trafficking, I would have thought, by definition, if we were just to, to, to come and do more of that, they're already doing a lot, and they are clearly already not smashing the human traffickers. So unless it is only Britain with the intelligence, Kevin, that could lead to us crushing these human trafficking gangs, what, what is the benefit of working all together? Or am I being a bit naive there? No, you're, 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 you're completely right, Patrick. I mean, 125,000 going into Italy alone, and they've got Frontex. It, it, it's ridiculous. Right. What, what we need to, what needs to be done is, a, yes, a single European approach, but you won't get that. No. So what you've got to do is you've got to get the southern European countries, Spain, France, Italy and Greece, yeah. working together to stop the boats coming across the Mediterranean. Or, or, we, or, or you, the entire European Union nation's navies go and patrol you know, the sea, I suppose, where, where the entry point is around Italy, around Greece and around places like that. Maybe that could be something on the external borders of the EU. For what it's worth, so apparently 72% of people who live within the European Union want the European Union to do more to preserve its external borders. So it shouldn't be a particularly unpopular decision. But Kevin, we're, we're going to have to leave it there, I'm afraid, my good man. Thank you very, very much. We're a bit out of time because Kevin Saunders there, who is the former Chief Immigration Officer of the UK Border Force. I'm not sure it'll make a huge amount of difference. Certainly, that's not really the view of Dennis McShane, Richard Tice or Kevin Saunders, the three people that I've spoken to about this right now. But I'll tell you where I think it might make a difference. It might make a difference politically in this country, which means nothing, by the way, if you're worried about having a migrant hotel near where you live or spending a load of taxpayers' money on the migrant crisis. But politically, it could well make a difference. Why? Because when Keir Starmer stands up and says, this is what I want to do to tackle the migrant crisis, if it's exactly the same as what Rishi Sunak is basically about to go and announce, but Keir Starmer also won't say anything when it comes to flying people to Rwanda, then you could argue, if you were a Conservative, that the Tories want to do more. And that may well be important at the next election. Moving on, although you can get more on this story on our website, how could I forget? GBnews.com. It's the fastest growing national news site in the country. It's got the best analysis, big opinion and the latest breaking news. But here's something.